Oh, welcome to this closing out the loop on the design evolution of the pedometer plus plus uh, liquid glass redesign. So t essentially what I wanted to do was go through some of the main screens of pedometer plus plus on iOS 18 and iOS 26 and show how it has evolved, developed, and changed. Um, so I'm going to start off with the main sort of screen in pedometer plus plus. And my goal for this screen was very much something to be familiar, straightforward, um, that if you're going from the one to the other, you're not going to be suddenly confused, don't know where anything is, but at the same time, I wanted it to feel natural and at home on iOS 26. So you can see the main content of the screen is essentially unchanged. Um, I made essentially no changes to this part of the application, you know, the, the bar graphs, this is all the same way as it was, you know, with the dynamic scaling and things like that. Um, the main changes here, or obviously the big one, is the change from the tab bar style to the new tab bar style, which is inset and concentric, um, and also the change at the top to a left-aligned title and the new liquid glass toolbar style uh, buttons up here. Um, additionally, you can notice in previously I had done a tinting effect on the top nav bar um, to, based on your current uh, performance in terms of you know whether you've reached your goal or not and one of the changes I made is now there's a much more subtle effect well, maybe it's slightly hard to see on the video but rather than the background here being white um, in light mode it is very slightly green white I guess you'd say or orange white or red white depending on where you are um, and the reason reason I did that is I found these liquid glass controls here and here really uh, work best when there is something other than white behind them. Otherwise, they kind of lose a bit of their uh, interest and doesn't work quite as well. So let me just bring up the Trends tab, and you can get a sense of some of the, some of the changes uh, throughout the app are much more sort of minor and simple. Um, here, really, the core part of the Trends tab is it largely unchanged. Really, the main change here is that now I'm using the uh, iOS 26 liquid glass uh, segment control rather than my previous um, segment control and largely this is just rounding it out um, and adding the sort of highlight effects that are quite common across iOS 26. Um, additionally I'm changing um, so now you know everywhere the X button is always in the top left I'm using the cancellation app to sort of slot for that um, which is something that in iOS 26 there's a bit of a stronger opinion for um, things like the sharing tab similarly Really, the change is just changing the, the roundness of the buttons and making sure that the X is in the right place. Okay, so going over to the Roots tab, where you organize and plan Roots, um, there's a few, few changes here. Um, as you can see, the main changes um, here are just sort of changing some of the layout. And this was a lot of the changes I did here are, uh, I found that there was an opportunity in this update to do a lot of things that I think make the app better, but um, are informed by knowing how the app is actually used in practice and uh, trying to kind of clean up things that uh, didn't make as much sense before. So this is the old, in the old Roots um, tab, you would have this big, large Manage Offline Maps area. Now I've moved that to just a toolbar button up here because the main focus of this is route planning and showing you the routes you have in your application. Um, and similarly, rather than having this pl new plan your root button here that's now been placed um, up here um, and similarly I've moved some of the sharing and uh, root control features um, into the actual editor itself so let me open that up so you can see now, this screen <laughs> looks very different um, is something that um, I'm really quite proud of the way this one has worked out um, there's some some of the changes are fairly you know dramatic and some of them are more subtle. Um, so some of them I've, I've changed the uh, root info pa panel from being um, this kind of inset thing all the way up top to being a floating thing. Um, and this particularly works really well with liquid glass where um, as you move things around you get this you know the beautiful lensing effect um, based on the background here. Um, similarly I've, you can also probably tell I the base map has been dramatically updated. Um, I worked with a cartographer to uh, create a, a new base map for Pedometer Plus Plus that um, has the same rich information that I really loved before, um, but with a bit more vibrancy, a bit more clarity. Um, so some of the things like in forests, for example, used to have this pa sort of pattern of trees everywhere. Um, and while in some ways that is helpful and uh, useful, it creates a lot of visual noise that I think doesn't lend itself to the clarity um, that we would prefer in 
uh, I was 26. And so I worked with someone to give me something that didn't have that effect, but still had all of the rich trail data and information that um, I you know, sort of expect and want here. Here, rather than having the panel, the you know, editor features here, um, I moved them down over here. So if you wanted to you know, edit or add points, you do that in the same way, but the controls for that are down here um, on the map itself. Another screen that got um, a lot of over, over up over overhauling um, was the start workout screen, and this is a great example I think where I stripped down and simplified a lot of what was uh, in the previous design um, to make it more intuitive and obvious to use. Uh, so, for example, you can see the activity type and workout goal options are much more compact than they used to be before, and this is largely informed by sort of looking through the actual usage of my app and understanding that most users will just choose one of these and then use it for essentially all of their workouts. And so I can take up a little bit less space here um, in, in how I manage that. Um, similarly, um, having the manage offline maps option here, I don't think really makes as much sense as instead, um, if you choose a route, you know, so if you're gonna walk from the, the Nevada and Vertical Falls feet, you get a button that can now download um, this for offline use right from here. Or similarly, if you choose a route, it will just show it to you from here. Um, the view, if you go into the actual map for you know where you are, this is now, if you really needed to do the offline mapping, it's available in the, that mapping preview. Um, but I found for most users, that's just not something that is as commonly used. And so, and I think it was a bit confusing when you're, if you're just trying to start a typical workout. Um, but the map preview is still here, just like before. And overall, this has just sort of been streamlined. Uh, similarly, I took the live activity views, which um, previously were a bit more in, which were in line, but also a little bit sort of complicated with lots of words and things. Um, that doesn't really look nearly as good um, on, I, I find on iOS 26. And so instead I've streamlined them a little bit, um, adding a little bit less of the, especially colored text doesn't look very good when you, um, especially in the clear style um, where, a bit more of your wallpaper on your home screen or sorry, on your lock screen will show through. Um, and similarly, this uh, the live activity with the map, um, I've, I've expanded it a lot. And this looks really good on the, the lock screen now uh, where you can have an inline sort of concentric view here that uh, shows your current workout stats. So in the actual workout screen, <laughs> there's a lot of changes um, here. So I used to have this text-based version um, that was separate from the map. Um, here, I've just combined those two into one thing. Um, you can show whatever metric you want um, here, and these are all configurable. So if you bring up the uh, workout options chooser, you can change what gets shown there. So if rather than you know distance, if you want, all, if you're all very speed focused, or um, a very common one for hiking, for example, would be to um, have distance and elevation gain. Um, but as you can see, I've, this interface just becomes a much more clean and straightforward. Um, and I think it really lends itself to um, showing you where you are, showing you how to do navigation. So in terms of if you know if we've chosen a route, it'll be highlighted on this map. Um, but I found that this approach just is much cleaner and I think fits a lot uh, better on iOS 26. Um, and coming over to the settings tab is just another area where I think you can get a good sense of some of the changes that I've made here. And a lot of this, are these are subtle, some of these are not as dramatic, but I think I really wanted to make it feel um, at home when I was 26. So this is not quite the same as, you know, a traditional I was 26 settings app. Um, I think there's, a, you know, Panorama Plus Plus has a very distinct style to it, but I think this version feels very at home, you know, so where I have this nice rounded buttons, beautifully concentric with the outside here. Um, and that, you know, similarly, you rather than using my old uh, custom uh, segmented control, now I just use the standard one. Um, there's a lot of places like that where I think this feels very at home on iOS 26 in a way that uh, the old one is a little bit blocky, a little bit um, heavy. Yeah, and that's just a quick overview of what's changed in Panamera Plus um, Plus. I think the design is something that I'm really proud of and I think worked out really well. I think I lent into familiarity and straightforwardness. You know, it's not a redesign in the sense of everything got sh got moved everywhere, or moved around, no one's gonna find anything, it's very confusing. Instead, I think it is a redesign that feels very familiar, but also very at home um, on the new design.